Hey everyone, I've been on the drug Nexavar serafinib for about seven months now, and I wanted to give you a general update as to how my body's responded to the drug thus far. So I've been having MRIs of my abdomen and pelvis every three months since starting the drug, and since starting the drug, these scans have shown that my tumor hasn't grown, and also its signaling has become reduced progressively with each scan. And this last scan that I had, which was about a little over a month ago, was the first scan to show that it looks like the tumor has shrunk a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean about two millimeters. So nothing too substantial, but of course, good news nonetheless. That being said, uh, I find it to be a bit of a double-edged sword uh, because of course, on the one hand, it's fantastic that my tumor is responding to the drug and that it's shrunk. But on the other hand, it means that I will most likely be on this drug indefinitely or until I can no longer tolerate it or it is no longer effective for my tumor. Since there is no cure for desmoid tumors and unless I have it surgically removed, this tumor will most likely be with me for the rest of my life and will continue to have the potential to grow. Uh, so that's a difficult pill to swallow, both literally and metaphorically speaking. Uh, but uh, I am hoping that maybe if this tumor continues to respond in the way that it has to this drug, that hopefully after I've been on the drug for about a year, that maybe I can start taking uh, maybe six month breaks in between um, with continued scans. So we'll see. Um, but I also wanted to talk uh, beyond just how my tumors responded to the drug, but also how my body as a whole has responded. Uh, so Nexvar is sort of a baby chemo. Uh, it tends to have more mild side effects when compared to more traditional chemo, but that being said, it still is chemo and it still sucks. Uh, so most people don't start seeing side effects with this drug until about two months in after the drug started building up in their system, and for the most part that proved to be the case for me, with the exception of fatigue, which I started noticing probably within the first two weeks on the drug. And unfortunately, uh, the fatigue has just sort of gotten a bit more intense as time has progressed. And also, retrospectively looking at it, um, probably within the first month, I started having some short-term memory recall issues. And uh, it's sort of hard to describe this particular type of fogginess, but to give you an example, uh, if I'm looking something up on the internet and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I should look this up, by the time I've opened a new tab, I sometimes forget the reason that I initially opened that tab in the first place. And initially I just dismiss this as, you know, I'm human, we all forget things. Um, but at this point it's happened frequently enough where I just can no longer dismiss it as just a coincidence. Uh, and then also, maybe about somewhere in the first month, for about two weeks, I started having some really severe joint pain. I had a lot of pain when it came to moving my right shoulder. And then the joint pain just started rotating um, from joint to joint, you know, from my elbow to my wrist, to small joints like my knuckles. Um, and it mostly is just sort of a dull joint pain. And uh, it did disappear for a few months or so, but then probably about four months into the drug, it resurfaced and hasn't gone anywhere since. Um, and then sort of like clockwork, about two months into the drug was when I noticed probably one of the most common side effects with this drug, which is something called hand and foot syndrome, which is where a little bit of the drug leaks into your capillaries and then um, burns the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet from the inside out. Um, and like most burns, it has grades of severity. I think I'm probably fortunately on the lower grade. Uh, my palms still look relatively okay. There's some dry, painful skin in between my fingers, um, and then the soles of my feet, they have a few small blisters. And it sort of feels like um, a lot of paper cups sometimes, or that throbbing feeling you get after you touch something really hot. And uh, my hands and feet have definitely um, developed an increased sensitivity to temperature. And I've noticed that if I'm walking for an extended period of time, my feet do become more irritated, so I try and stay off my feet as much as possible. Uh, and then about three months in was when I started noticing diarrhea, which unfortunately is seems to be a common side effect that accompanies most chemos, this one included. And uh, colonless people tend to have what normal people consider to be diarrhea, uh, so diarrhea for us is sort of diarrhea squared. Uh, so. 
Along with that, of course, comes dehydration, and I've definitely noticed since starting this drug, I've had a lot more issues with dehydrated uh, dehydration where I'm becoming uh, more dehydrated more frequently. Uh, so it's become more difficult to sort of find that balance of, okay, you know, staying hydrated, um, but also, you know, not having to go to the bathroom all the time to the point where I can, you know, go out and function and do what it is that I need to do. Um, so, and then sort of along that lines, another side effect that uh, this chemo has had for me is something called dry mouth, uh, which I sort of think is a culmination of the fact that I've been colonless for about two and a half years now, and also this drug is just sort of exacerbating that. Uh, and so the problem with dry mouth is that there's not as much saliva that's getting in between your teeth and getting out that bacteria, uh, so that leads to a side effect from that just for me was totally unexpected and just out of left field, uh, which is cavities. Um, I've developed a lot of cavities, uh, which is apparently pretty common for people on certain types of chemo and radiation. Uh, so if you are about to undergo any of those, um, please be really vigilant about your dental care so you can prevent the situation that's happened to me from happening to you. Uh, and then, of course, there's hair loss, which I've already talked about in a separate video, um, so I won't say anything else about it now, cause other than just that, unfortunately, it's still going strong for me. Uh, so, yeah, uh, that's been my experience thus far on Nexavar. Um, everyone's experience is, of course, different, and I also didn't mean to trivialize anyone else's experience on a different type of chemo or um, any other type of serious medication. I just wanted to share my experience so people who are about to perhaps start this drug have an idea of what someone on it is experiencing. So yeah, all right, hopefully talk to you soon, bye.